Okay, yeah, good day, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, yeah, today we will talk about transactions in Bitcoin. So we will define what the UTXO model is, uh, how this model is applied in Bitcoin protocol, uh, how transactions are created uh, and performed and processed on like on the Bitcoin network, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Today, we will touch transaction structure and main mechanics that allows you to send money to another person. Uh, let's start uh, with some terms. The first one, key pair. Uh, we mentioned that before, that key pair, that's a private, a public keys for digital signature. So in Bitcoin protocol or in uh, different cryptocurrency or digital currency, you're using key pair for producing digital signature. And you're using this digital signature for proving that you are a relevant owner of some money or some uh, commitment, et cetera, et cetera. So it's something that uh, can be used only by you and only you can prove that your authority that can perform some action. So if I have some balance that is linked to my account and my account linking to my key pair uh, with digital signature, I can spend this money. Uh, the next one, Bitcoin address. So Bitcoin address isn't equal to public key. Uh, Bitcoin address, that's a hash value of public key. So firstly, you should generate the private key, then you should derive a public key, and later you can generate address by hashing of the public key value. Uh, next one, transaction. What well, the transaction is, it's some data structure that allows you to perform some action on the blockchain or on some accounting system. Uh, so it's uh, not a necessary that this transaction should send some money or something like that you can use transaction for voting you can use transaction for timestamp and some event in some registry um yeah actually in bitcoin mostly you use transaction for sending money to like another participants but transaction it's some action in accounting system uh, and the last term that's a bitcoin script just imagine that kind of language that allows you to define how exactly some money can be spent. Like simple, simple smart contract. Uh, okay, let's start with like simplified model, uh, how Bitcoin transaction looks like. Uh, it consists three main components. It's a transaction header. Uh, that includes some metadata. Uh, later we will we will explain what exactly is included in this header. Uh, then input coins and output coins. Input coins include a link to previous transaction for where this money were received, uh, proof of coin ownership. So you should prove that you are relevant owner of this money. Uh, and so some additional data later, we will explain what the data is. Uh, and output coins, so that data includes some fields that define how much you're going to pay and uh, how exactly the recipient of this money can take that. Okay, uh, let's deeply look in transaction input. So it includes four fields. The first one is a hash value. So that's a hash value of the previous transaction. So when you are creating some Bitcoin transaction, you should define where exactly you took this money. So you should provide a reference uh, on the previous transactions uh, when, for example, Alice paid for paid you. And uh, it's like um, with this reference, you are proving that these coins exist uh, in the system and it like it wasn't created from the air. The next one index, uh, it's like output number value. So it means that in previous transaction where you put this money, uh, this transaction can include a lot of different outputs uh, because uh, later we will, we will define that like more, uh, more strictly, but uh, just imagine that you can 
create a transaction that pays uh, to different to different people. For example, uh, through one transaction, I want to pay uh, to ten different like people, and they can do that in Bitcoin protocol. So it's not necessary to create one transaction only like for payment to one person. Uh, then script seek. Uh, this is a proof of coin ownership. Usually that's uh, a digital signature. So in this field, you should prove that you are owner of this money. And the last one is a sequence. Uh, that's a version of the input value. So for example, if your transaction uh, wasn't approved by the Bitcoin network, uh, you, you're you able to repeat the section. So for example, you can, uh, you can change a fee that you're going to pay for this transaction confirmation uh, and later just send a new transaction, a new version of the input to the network. And all validators can see that there's a new version of the previous transaction. And, uh, and uh, everybody can reject the, the previous transaction, transaction if uh, it wasn't verified before and so add the new version of the transaction and confirm that. Uh, transaction output is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, it uh, includes only like two values. The first one is value. So that's amount of coins you want to send. Uh, and the last one is a script pub key. It's just some conditions or some script, uh, which defines how exactly this money can be taken. So the simplest example, uh, I can put, uh, there is a condition that only like the owner of this public key can take this money. And uh, obviously that uh, if Alice keeps the appropriate private key, and if Alice can generate appropriate digital signature, she can take this money. Uh, but uh, Bitcoin doesn't limit you in this like condition. So it can be any, it can be like more difficult uh, because uh, Bitcoin supports a lot of different opcodes and different operations. Uh, okay, let's look on real Bitcoin transaction. And you can see that it's separated on three fields. The first one, the right one, uh, that's a transaction header. So it consists of a version of the transaction. The version of the transaction at, uh, defines uh, how exactly it should, verify, it should be verified. So it's like version of the protocol uh, according to which like this transaction will be processed. Uh, and the next one is log time value. So you can limit your transaction and you can say that this, transa this transaction can be processed only after some time. And it means that validators can't include this transaction before like this time happens. Uh, then let's look on like blue area. Uh, that's a list of input values. So in this transaction includes two inputs. The first one has some hash value with the previous transaction and index, index of the output of the previous transaction. Later script signature. So that's a witness data. So that's a data that uh, you're using for proving your ownership of these coins. And the next one sequence, you, you can see this a version of the transaction. Uh, it means that like the max value and uh, later it will be just decremented, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we can see like the second input, it has uh, the same structure as the first one, uh, some hash value for the previous transaction, index of the output of the previous transactions, some script signature and sequence. Uh, Greenfield uh, also consists of two outputs. The first one transfers uh, 0 0.007, et cetera, et cetera, Bitcoins to another account. And uh, it defines that this money uh, could be taken only by the user that has like this address. As, as some of course, firstly and the later just address. Uh, and the second output can uh, spend this value of bitcoins uh, to the owner of like this account. 
that's it so this is a real bitcoin transaction and this transaction are this transaction is processed uh by the validators okay we have one question oh okay alex thank you so much alex sent you a um, specification of the transaction so you can use that as a reference if you're for example developer or something like that you can use that for creating like the true the, the true and real own transaction okay uh five years ago five or six year, years ago uh community of bitcoin protocol uh updated the protocol itself uh this protocol call it segregated fitness and this update allows you to segregate proofs of data ownership from like other fields of the transaction why it's needed you can see that in this transaction uh, the most part of data is taken by script signature so that's a witness of uh, coin ownership and uh, this protocol allows you to segregate this value from the transaction itself and just keep that separately uh, it means that uh, yeah the size of the block is limited by one megabyte and it means if you separate all witnesses you can just uh yeah so this block and this transaction will be like more cost efficient uh so yeah in trans transaction will store uh the hash value index value sequence uh transaction outputs etc cetera, etc cetera, but it will not keep uh, script signature internally but script, 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 script signature will be included in the block cryptographically uh, but it, it's also stored by all validators but uh, this data uh, just now don't take a place in the block itself in one megabyte uh, okay what's the features of transaction in bitcoin so the first one when a user spends some coins he should re refer to a previously received payment uh so the first transaction that issues some bitcoins in the network is a coin based transaction and later these uh, coins could be distributed any different ways but it means when uh when you're going to send some money from your bitcoin address you should prove that this money exists how you can do that you can put a previous uh a hash value of the previous transaction uh then in this transaction also can be like the previous uh, hash value of the previous transaction etc etc uh and uh, at the finish like you can see that these coins were issued but by some coin based transaction so full history is transparent and uh, everyone can verify that uh, money wasn't like uh, produced by by air okay and the second point that uh, the transaction spends all coins from the specified output uh, it means that uh, for example if you have two bitcoins and you want to pay only like one bitcoin for new car and uh, you want to receive like a one bitcoin back to your address uh you can't spend only one bitcoin you should create two operations the first one will pay to for, for the product and the second will uh, the second one will pay to your own account uh it's like the only single way to return your money because you you can take only a part of particular input and just spend only part of this input you should spend all this input and just you can create one two or more different outputs okay yeah uh i have one question to audience uh who knows we yeah we check it in all fields in transaction but we didn't find a fee so who can say uh where exactly fee is defined in bitcoin protocol so i'm creating transaction i 
create the structure. I uh, define it who exactly received my money, but in transaction, you can see that there isn't like a field that defines a fee. So how exactly user can create the fee, define that in the payment and pay to validators. Okay, yeah, Dan, Dan answered that the fee is the difference between, between input sum and output sum. That's correct. That's correct. No, fee isn't another output. It's just a difference between input coins and output coins. It means that if you created a transaction and uh, on the input of this transaction, you had one Bitcoin, but on the output, you define it that you're going to pay only, uh, only 0 0.7 Bitcoins. It means that 0 0.3 Bitcoins will pay as a fee to validators. So yeah, transaction doesn't include a field where you define a fee, but validators can calculate how exactly how much money uh, exactly they will receive for confirming this transaction. Uh, okay, where is the output? Oh, sorry. I didn't get the question. Yeah, output is, is a green field. So in this transaction, as you can see, uh, it uh, has two outputs with two different sums. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Olena, I would propose to add, I don't know, two or three points to them uh, for correct answer. Okay, I write okay. him how. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, now uh, let's return how the change works. So it's not possible to spend only a part of the received coins. So if you received one Bitcoin, you should spend one Bitcoin. You can't spend like less. You can't spend only part of this Bitcoin. You should spend all Bitcoins you have. Uh, but it's possible to specify several recipients. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can create a transaction uh, that uh, can pay uh, 10 different people, uh, 100 different people, etc. It doesn't matter. So Bitcoin protocols doesn't limit you uh, in the amount of people you want to pay. Uh, so you can specify yourself as a recipient. It means I can create a transaction, uh, put the reference to the previous transaction, to the previous inputs, at recipient of the money, for example, Alice, and I can receive this second recipient as myself. It means that I'm paying right now, I'm paying to me, to my Bitcoin address. Uh, and uh, this, this is correct. So you put one Bitcoin on the input of the transaction and just divide this payment to two different parts. The first one you're paying for some product, for example, and the second one you're paying to your Bitcoin address. And that's correct. So all validators can check that sum on input of transactions is equal, uh, means fee is equal to some of the outputs of the transaction. So that's uh, like, that's a true transaction. It can be processed and it uh, doesn't violate like the protocol rules. Uh, and change is an output address to yourself. Yeah, as we discussed it. Um, okay, okay, let's move forward. Yeah, what's the, UTXO definition. UTXO is the unspent transaction output. So Bitcoin doesn't have like balances. So in Bitcoin, you doesn't have account. In Bitcoin, you doesn't have balance that is linked to this account. In Ethereum, you can have account, you can have balance, native currency like linked to this account, but Bitcoin doesn't support this model. Uh, in Bitcoin, your wallet stores not keys from your account, but just set of keys. And uh, for each key, each key can be linked to appropriate amount of Bitcoins in the network, in the system. And uh, it's like a digital wallet. So if you open digital wallet, you, uh, not, not a digital, like a physical wallet, you can open the physical wallet and just calculate 
all banknotes uh, for receiving like the final amount of your money. Uh, in Bitcoin, the same. You should calculate balances on not balances amount of bitcoins on all unspent transaction outputs um, that belongs to you, and uh, just calculate the final amount how bitcoins you have. Uh, there is a database with a confirming transaction that determine. Uh, the distribution of coins between addresses. Uh, so yeah, you could ask a question how we can calculate the final amount of Bitcoins in the network. Uh, because uh, if you wanted to do that, you should process all transactions. And uh, if I wanted to receive like my relevant balance, it means I should uh, process all Bitcoin transactions and just found uh, and just find all my UTXOs. Uh, this is true, but uh, like for reaching some efficiency, uh, validators and auditors, etc., they can uh, form coin database. This is a database that is already formed based on all processing transactions, and it uh, just uh, confirm it. it. It just keeps all unspent uh, unspent transaction outputs. And you can just fastly indexate this database and find all uh, all money that belongs to to your keys. Uh, it means that all outputs are divided into spent and unspent. So unspent transaction outputs is this uh, outputs uh, that uh, don't have any existing transactions uh, that have references to these outputs. And this transaction wasn't confirmed at Bitcoin blockchain. So that's it. And all validators, all auditors uh, keep this database with unspent transaction outputs. Uh, okay, let's let's see how you can spend your money, how you can spend Bitcoins on example. For example, I was received from someone uh, 100 Bitcoins. Uh, later, Alice can create a transaction uh, where I provide a reference to this 100 Bitcoins and pay only like to two people. Uh, first, one, the first recipient will receive uh, 45 Bitcoins and the second recipient will receive uh, 50 Bitcoins. It means that fee for confirming this transaction is equal to five Bitcoins. Uh, later, uh, recipient number one created a new transaction where pay 20 bitcoins to recipient number three. And uh, at the same time, this person uh, defined that uh, output number one in this transaction will return 20 bitcoins back to his or her address. At the same time, uh, recipient number two in blue jacket, uh, created a new transaction where again uh, he or she pays to two different people, 10 bitcoins and 35 bitcoins. And later, it's pretty interesting, these people can create a common transaction and uh, put their all like money they have. They also define transaction fee, define output that will pay change and the recipient of this money. It means that you can create a transaction where you can put your money, uh, your neighbor money, your wife money, and just pay for something like for, uh, I don't know, for uh, for recovering your road between like our houses. Uh, so Bitcoin can't verify like is a payment from one person uh, from 10 persons, et cetera, et cetera. Moreover, uh, you can, as I described it before, in your wallet, uh, you have a lot of different banknotes. And where you create a transaction, you should select appropriate banknotes and put them as an input of this transaction. It can be one banknote, it can be five different banknotes, et cetera, et cetera. So it doesn't matter. Bitcoin allows you to create the transaction with any amount of input values and any amount of output values. So limitation is only like a block size. Uh, so yeah, for example, if you want to pay for 
I don't know, some service or for some rocket, uh, and you have a wallet with uh, unspent outputs. Uh, 0.3 bitcoins, 1 bitcoin, 3.5 bitcoins, uh, 0.54 uh, bitcoins, etc., 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 and you want to uh, pay only like 5 bitcoin for some service. It means you can spend 1 bitcoin, and add it as a reference, you can spend 3.5, etc., but your wallet finds like the most efficient way uh, for spending your bitcoins. It's like if you wanna if you wanna buy a like uh, a bottle like this water and you open it your physical wallet, you also can find like the most efficient way for paying that uh, with keeping like more suitable banknotes for you. Uh, Bitcoin wallets do the same, <clears throat> and also you can see that uh, we had the reference. Uh, on this like unspent outputs, uh, their sum is equal to 0 0.7 bitcoins. Uh, you're paying 0 0.5 bitcoins for some service and you're defining uh, one output, 0 0.1 bitcoin as a change. So that's okay. Uh, okay. Let's look on questions. Yeah, all questions answered. So let's go on. Uh, yeah, let's talk about privacy. Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin database and Bitcoin blockchain is totally transparent. So uh, encryption uh, isn't used in Bitcoin. So everyone can verify everyone. Uh, all transactions uh, have references that will, uh, yeah, that that earlier or later they will uh, show where exactly this money were created. So with Bitcoin address, this particular Bitcoin address, it's easy to track the entire history of payments. So if if you are using the same Bitcoin address for everything, for all payments, for all changes. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So everybody can easily track all your activity with Bitcoin, and also you can track the history of particular address. You can see that in Bitcoin Explorer and verify that everything is going correctly from the te technical perspective. And uh, if you're interested in tracking some uh, activity of some user and you know uh, his addresses. Uh, you can you can track everything and you can audit everything. So if you wanna uh, keep a privacy in Bitcoin network, it's recommended to use new addresses for each incoming payment and change. It uh, means that uh, Bitcoin wallet allows you to generate a lot of different addresses. Um, so infinitive different addresses and uh, i would recommend you to use that feature uh, because when you generate a new address uh, nobody can link that to the previous addresses so that's impossible uh, because that's cryptographically protected uh, yeah there are some services that are analyzing um, or like graph of uh, Bitcoin transactions. But uh, if you will use Bitcoin correctly, you will protect your privacy. So yeah, a, a lot of different wallets support this feature and they are generating like new and new keys for new transactions. Uh, and they are doing that deterministic way. Uh, so that's not a problem for now. But, but if you have the ability to do that, please do that. Uh, okay, yeah, and there are a couple of rules of good manners when forming transactions. So uh, a good created wallet, Bitcoin wallets, uh, support this feature. If you wanna implement your own wallet, you should like also, uh, yeah, you, you should implement that as well. The first one for each incoming payment and change create a new address. 
uh, and just your wallet will keep all these addresses and can indexate that and can uh, display your um, a correct amount of all your funds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, it's better to create a new address for each payment, for each incoming payment. Uh, the next one, optimize selection of UTXOs for the target payment amount. It's as I said, in this example, uh, you should uh, find like the most efficient and spent outputs for aggregating them and paying like 0 0.5 Bitcoins for the service. Uh, the next one, sort transaction inputs and outputs according to a common rule for all. It will allow you to easily synchronize your wallet uh, and uh, like uh, differ that from existing ones. And the last one, include a minimum fee regardless of transaction size. Uh, minimum fee for confirmation. So that will allow uh, other users to receive their service without like uh, our payments. Okay. Uh, yeah, in conclusions, the first one, the wallet can handle an unlimited number of addresses. Uh, okay, and later on one of our lectures, we will explain how exactly uh, wallet can, can use it and how exactly these keys can be derived, generated uh, with like ability to recover them later. Uh, the next one, coins received on the same wallet are not combined together. So yeah, forget about common balance, uh, forget about one single account per wallet. Uh, all coins link it with different unspent outputs. Just your wallet can aggregate them and display you the final amount of money you have. Uh, but uh, in the wallet, that's a uh, keep it like with different, very different way. Uh, and uh, outputs are tied to specific addresses. So yeah, so in output, you can define who exactly can spend this money. And usually uh, like uh, each output is linked to specific address. So by this address can be public key. By this address can be some like more difficult condition, uh, for example, pay to script hash, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, each output defines some rule how exactly this money can be spent later. Okay, that's it. Let's switch to your questions. Please, Anton. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, I, I have two questions, if I may. Um, first one is, um, I don't know if you can suggest, but if you can, I would really appreciate it. Um, which Bitcoin wallet do you use or do you recommend your friends, mm -hmm. um, maybe clients? Um, so what's, what's, what's a secure, good option for you to, so that, you know, say, for example, I could go away and research it and have a look at it and so on and so forth. That's question one. Um, and maybe you answer that, and then I, I I ask my second question. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You can use like any wallet you want, uh, obviously, and uh, you can go to Play Market or App Store and select any wallet you want. Um, but just they are different. You can use Bitcoin Core Wallet, but uh, that means that means you should uh, synchronize your own Bitcoin node for using that. So it's not so not not, not so useful. Uh, you can use Electrum Wallet. It's a SPV node and wallet, and it's pretty flexible. But uh, this wallet not for like each user. So because the interface could be a little bit better, but I'm using like this one. Uh, there are a lot of good wallets, secure wallets, uh, with like pretty comfortable in interface with a good UX UI. Uh, but uh, you can you can just uh, find them on any like marketplace with applications. Uh, just uh, you should 
uh, you should just pay attention that it should be a uh, non-custodial wallet. It means that you should generate keys and you should control keys because yeah. there are some wallets uh, that uh, says, okay, they are wallets, but uh, your money will be stored by the separate service. And so you will use us only like for uh, requesting uh, and we will display it your current balance, et cetera, et cetera. But that's, it, it will not be like your money. If you want to use Bitcoin properly, uh, you should use not non-custodial wallet. Uh, that wallet that will control your keys and you will control these keys. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I obviously know about custodial versus non-custodial. I meant more like in terms of um, integrity of the application itself. Oh, okay, okay. Like, and also, I would recommend you to use open source uh, wallet okay. because it's audited. It's uh, used by a lot of different developers, uh, systems, etc., etc., etc. So uh, it's better to use like open source solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And second question was about, so you had the slide uh, with the actual um, Bitcoin transaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering, uh, I, I don't know if anybody else wants to hear more about this, but I, I'm, I'm quite interested in, um, you know, there are all these different values, like, for example, index value. Mm -hmm. um, how, how like, why, why is there a particular number um, in that particular value and how that value is created, uh, so maybe like a one step deeper in the in 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 the you know in the code of the transaction, if if you know much about it, it'd be interested. To, I'd be interested to to kind of understand it a bit more. Mm, okay, let me share my screen again. Let's return to this. So, like, why that particular index value is is that value and well, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, hash. That's uh, yeah. That's that's obvious. Yeah, this is just a hash value of the previous transaction, and you can find that in any like explorer. Uh, if you if you received one day like uh, payment with crypto, uh, somebody uh, sent you this hash value of transaction and asked you to verify is it like confirm it and uh, uh, like did you receive your money. Uh, index, okay, that's a good question. Just imagine that the transaction uh, that uh, you're ref referring to uh, has a lot of recipients. So, for example, Alice created a transaction where uh, she paid to 200 people. And I should recognize where exactly my payment. Because in this transaction, I should refer to the correct unspent output. Uh, in transaction that was created by the uh, by by Edis, uh, it consists of two hundred different outputs. Uh, but I uh, I put like this number one hundred and eighty eight uh, as an index of my money. For example, in, I don't know Edis is a, a bank or some exchange, and just uh, she just paid out to all your consumers uh, so yeah in previous in this case in previous transaction uh, the previous transaction included uh, no less than 188 outputs uh-huh clear so if if say for example i send money to alice uh -huh. and in the previous transaction and i only send the money to her so the index value would, would be one yes right Yes. Only, one, only one transaction that came in. Yeah, uh, okay. that's uh, as in the second example, you can see that index one. Uh, that it means that uh, in this transaction, with this hash value, uh, can be one or more outputs. Yeah. Uh, script signature, as I said, uh, usually it includes uh, a digital signature and uh, sometimes public key. Uh, so it's just. I don't know cryptographic values that allows you to prove that uh, this money is your uh, sequence. Uh, as I said, it's just uh, like a big number, and you can decrement that after you created a new version of the transaction. It just indicates to validator, so it's not. I I, I wouldn't say that's like. Uh, 
It's a random number? No, not a random, not a random. Just you can define uh, that like any number you want uh, and uh, it will not affect protocol rules. So it's just easier to validators to process this transaction and serve okay. them. Uh, okay. And output values, value of this obvious amount of Bitcoins yeah. you want to pay. A script public key. Uh, it can be just a public key. Uh, it can be Bitcoin address. It can be like more different conditions, for, for example, multi-signature or something like that. So just like a script where you can define how exactly uh, like this money uh, will be spent. So usually it's just a Bitcoin address. Yeah. Uh, I am just can define the uh, my counterparty Bitcoin address and just pay directly to him or her. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we will have like the separate lecture with uh, different wallet types. So you will uh, you will try to differ warm wallets, cold wallets, hot wallets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's not like not the last our lecture about wallets, about transactions. Uh, so yeah, if if you didn't get something, just don't worry, ask questions, and anyway, you will return to the same. Okay. Alex, thank you for a lot. Uh, and uh, please wait for our test for you. Uh, and uh, see you later, maybe. Thank you so much for the time and attention. Yeah, see you later. Yeah, have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See you. Bye. 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 Thank you.